Hi, I'm Nigel Redman, Ear Level Engineering. Today we'll look at envelope generators. Here's a typical ADSR envelope, the type used in classic analog synthesizers. The exponential decline of the decay and release segments gives a natural fade when controlling a linear VCA, matching the loudness response of the ear. And this mimics natural plucked and struck instruments, piano, guitar, and drums, for example. The exponential shape comes from the discharging of a capacitor in hardware generators. The attack segment is different. We use the exponential shape of the charging of a capacitor with a constant current source, but we truncate the exponential for two reasons. First, a true exponential takes forever to reach its target, and we need a precise duration so we can switch to the decay segment. The second reason is that the convex exponential charging curve is the inverse of the ear's response, with faster changes where the ear is most sensitive and more subtle changes where it can be noticed least. Flattening the attack curve gives a more defined attack. To truncate the exponential, we simply charge towards a target that's higher than the attack peak, but terminate the attack phase when we reach the peak. The default settings in my code are for an attack target 0.3 above the peak matching my old Aries modular envelope generators, which have a 10 volt envelope peak while charging towards 13 volts. For decay and release, the discharge target is 0 .0001 below the sustain and zero levels, which is equivalent to maintaining the exponential shape till minus 80 dB for full scale, then truncating. The great thing about doing this in software is that we can change the charging target easily. In fact, we can change the attack target from a tiny amount above its peak for a curve that is nearly exponential to an amount that's hundreds of times higher for a curve that's practically a straight line. You may wonder why ADSRs don't use a concave exponential attack to match the ear's response, but that's just not a natural instrument attack shape. Energy doesn't build slowly and accelerate in real-world instruments. Typically, synthesizers use one of these ADSR envelope generators for a linearly controlled VCA and another for exponentially controlled filter or oscillator frequency. In the case of the linear VCA, it's helpful to view the envelope on a log plot to see its effect in decibels. Here, we'll view just the attack and decay segments on a dB scale. See how the decay gives a linear change in dB until it gets to the minus 80 dB point at the default curve setting? Increasing the target ratio towards a linear decay gives a loudness response that drops off quickly and sounds less natural. We can also get a good look at why the natural exponential attack shape is a poor choice. See how changing the attack rate seems to change the whole time at the peak instead of ramping to the peak? Moving towards a linear curve gives us a much better attack. Back to the linear view, we can see that either exponential or linear curves can make sense for VCFs and VCOs, depending on whether we want to ease into the destination or not. But if you're emulating classic synthesizers, you'll want something close to the default curves. I hope you found this helpful, and please check out my series on envelope generators in two parts plus source code on earlevel.com.